Once upon a forgotten time, Dana White told us all that females would never compete inside the UFC octagon. This question was posed to Dana White by a TMZ reporter at a time when women's MMA was kind of there, but not really. Uh, when are we going to see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. Never? Never. <laughs> the UFC boss was aware of that. The lack of a popular name coupled with the mediocre roster held it back, and women's MMA existed, but with very little relevance to the overall sport. Two years later though, Dana White himself was promoting the inaugural clash at UFC 157, pitting Ronda Rousey against Liz Carmouche. The Ronda Rousey show was such a smash hit that Joe Rogan declared Ronda Rousey a once-ever athlete. She's not a once in a lifetime, she's once ever. And even shed a few tears in the face of greatness. Such was the impact. It was so emotional for me. That was the, the closest I've ever come to crying while I was in I might cry now when I was interviewing somebody. It's because it was just, it was so intense and it was also like, I really knew that I was like seeing history. We are almost a decade beyond that time. And yet, it feels like we are back in 2011. Lack of a popular name and a stagnant, mediocre roster. Somewhere along the way, something went wrong and I'm out to figure out what happened. I mean, Logical reasons why you would say that at the time. Uh, when are we going to see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. 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 <laughs> I was trying to get people to accept the men fighting in a cage. And, and I'm going to admit, you know, there's this male chauvinist side to all of us. I don't want to see a pretty girl getting elbowed in the face. Who wants to see that? I want to see that. Then I met Ronda Rousey. From 2012 to 2015, Ronda Rousey was special beyond special. John Jones and his dominance, Brock Lesnar and his box office appeal. Rousey had both, and somehow she did it even better. The very first women's MMA fight under the UFC banner ended in the first round. And that was a perfect start to the experiment, and it grew into a profitable venture, all on the back of the untouchable champion. Her next title defense was even bigger against her rival and an established name in Misha Tate. She won that as well and kept at it. Ronda Rousey! Not a single opponent made it past the first round. By fall of 2015, Ronda Rousey was not just a fighter, she was the sport itself. It was not women's MMA, it was the Ronda Rousey show. And between the spectacle, hype and the sheer dominance, we never really got a chance to sit down and think, what about the ones she beat? The corporate folks from Dana White to Joe Rogan had already declared her the greatest ever, and her hypothetical feats grew more absurd with every octagon victory from 50% of the male bantamweights. I was like, she could probably beat half the men bantamweights in the, in the UFC. Is that true? To Floyd Mayweather. If Ronda Rousey fought Floyd Mayweather <laughs> with their two disciplines, who right. would win? I, I know people people get crazy about this, but but, but the people that, that don't know what they don't know, she would ragdoll him as soon as she put her hands on him. Cain Velasquez himself, Rousey was capable of beating them all under the right circumstances. <sighs> Once again, we didn't stop to think. Unfortunately, the Rowdy show came to a brutal end at UFC 193 when Holly Holm, a former pro boxer, knocked her unconscious in the second round and the unraveling began. The mystique, the aura, the appeal of Ronda Rousey came crashing down, and so did the sport of women's MMA. Like, on, honestly, like my thought, I was like uh, in the medical room and I was like down in the corner, I was sitting in the corner and I was like, what am I anymore if I'm not this? With the show over and Rousey gone, we finally started questioning. I think women's MMA is sort of at a level where men's MMA was in like the late 90s, like maybe the early 2000s, you know? It's like the, the level of competition is just not oh. nowhere near where it is in the men's division. And in the aftermath, Amanda Nunes emerged as the consensus greatest female fighter of all time, and she reigns undisputed to this day. She surpassed Ronda herself in a few short years and left no doubt, but maybe somewhere along the way, the UFC tapped out and stopped putting the effort they did during the Rousey era. Without the hype machine working over time and transforming every event into a unique spectacle, fans started paying attention to the actual work inside the octagon. And it was not a pretty sight for the most part. For every Amanda Nunes and Wei Li Zhang, there are about 10 or 20 who simply do not belong on the main card of a pay-per-view, and the frustration mounts each time a fight fails to deliver. 
This happens across the board, from contender fighters to championship belts. I'm proud of myself because I stuck to my strategy. Like I said, I'm an exciting fighter. I, I'm a finisher. I have one of the highest finishing rates. So I don't think that I was getting the booze. I'm pretty sure that was Carla. Apart from a handful of legitimately great fighters, the roster is shallow and the skill levels fall off a cliff after the champion and a few contenders. But all of this has been reiterated time and time again. Each time a fight cripples the momentum of the main card, we all gather around to rave and rant about the lack of skill and talent. But there are other factors at play here. We never discuss those. Most fans just do not care anymore. And consequently, neither does the company. During the peak of the Rousey era, fans, hardcore and casuals alike followed women's MMA. But following her departure, interest plummeted. And here we are today, with fan interest at an all-time low and every metric down. This is demonstrated by the numbers, and every interview with a female fighter draws little views in comparison. You open up a discussion board or read through YouTube comments, and you will see a lot of chatter regarding the male fighters, and very little discussion about the women's MMA fight just announced, even if the title is on the line. There is a general sense of apathy among the UFC fan base towards women's mixed martial arts, and in turn, the UFC is content with women's MMA just existing within the company. In the good old days, Dana White and Joe Rogan, the alpha males of the UFC, were the ones spearheading women's MMA, and Rousey was everywhere, on talk shows, magazine covers, and commercials, because fans wanted her there. Now, crickets. Hardcore fans do not follow because the talent pool is shallow, and casual fans do not have a cultural icon that draws them in. Today, the entire sport of women's mixed martial arts largely revolves around one individual, Back then, it was Ronda Rousey, and today, it's Amanda Nunes. And sure, during her fight week, the UFC always uploads a two-minute promo package declaring her as the best ever, but that is the definition of going through the motions, and most fans have no interest in watching any more than that. The promotional push around Nunes and the entire sport is non-existent in comparison to before, and when you put all these together, lack of talent, her rid matchmaking, and general apathy from the fan base, it really feels like 2011 up in here. Women's MMA collapsed the moment Rousey was knocked unconscious. The evolution stopped right there and then. Fans hopped off. Dana White moved on. And stagnancy followed. The in-cage limitations were even worse during the reign of Rousey. But it was novel. It was chaotic and the company itself was behind it. So a lot of the deficiencies were camouflaged. And we just enjoyed the once ever show. But without the spectacle, a million hype packages and Rogan screaming about generational shit. It becomes painfully apparent. Women's MMA is still in its early years, and fan support reflects that. From 1992 to 2005, MMA struggled for relevancy. But with the first breakthrough, the sport evolved in a burst. We had GSP, Anderson Silva, Brock Lesnar, and Conor McGregor. While on the other side, there was only Ronda Rousey. Amanda Nunes is great, but to build upon a sport, you need mega stars that carry the torch. Maybe, in due time, another superstar will emerge, bringing in fans and inspiring future competitors, better athletes to become mixed martial artists, but the company complacent and the talent pool stuck, it will take quite a while. In the meantime though, who's ready for the blockbuster Nunez versus Aldana fight? Show of hands? Yeah, see what I mean? Anyways, I gotta bounce. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.